Great. I started record the video. So yeah, people are coming, which is good. So as I mentioned, you know, at the end of the day, you're gonna have a chance to exit our works. So actually I have two different, you know, basically same material, but two different workshops. One for English for you guys, the other one is Korean version. So I actually encourage you guys to, you know, prepare your own data set to visualize something you know, out of the material that we have been learned. Yeah. Okay. And not necessarily you guys, I'm not expecting like very professional things, but it's more about like, you know, uh, exercise things. So as a sort of final format, there's no sort of mandatory, uh, no, no guideline or nothing actually. So you guys can make some screen capture or some animation or make some video and just give me the output. Then I'm gonna compile uh, all the material as a, like one short video. And then we're gonna exit this, uh, the outcome. Um, I don't know, but there's some guys that they're gonna install something in the physical, uh, the, the, the Tongji University, I guess. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so I hope that you guys, you know, typing the um, homework and material that I gave you. So we already passed on two days, right, for the Python. The first day is just learn pure Python sort of uh, syntax thing and, you know, data structure. And second day is we learn how to sort of visualize simple CSV or JSON or GeoJSON data using uh, Python and Graphopper. Correct, right? So today um, I am going to talk about different thing. It's called TypeScript. Don't worry about it. So I'm, I actually prepared a material which is basically same, you know, um, same algorithm as Python, but, 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 types, uh, but TypeScript syntaxes. So I think, uh, I mean, the TypeScript is sort of a superset of the JavaScript. So as long as you can, um, you know, as long as you are familiar with the Python or something, which is a uh, you know, basic programming, you know, language and easier, easier language for people. And then the TypeScript is also very easy, but it has a type as name stands for. So basically TypeScript is a sort of, a, um, let's say independent scripting language. And then it basically compiles uh, TypeScript to the JavaScript which is learned on the browser. So the reason I picked the TypeScript is because as you guys know, web is getting bigger and bigger is the most important platform uh, against like a, uh, the, uh, the, the Windows platform or iOS platform and mm -hmm. other, other things. So I guess, um, um, let me show my screen actually. Okay. Recently, many big company in Silicon Valley, they uh, adopt TypeScript. This is simply because the TypeScript is the type. So to think about Python is really good. I mean, very easy to learn, but however, it's not like suitable for developing a particular like uh, application for the people who are public or from research tools, because, you know, as the applications are getting bigger, the type is really important. Type is actually our, a sort of guideline to you know prevent from debug, debug bug or uh, easy to maintain the code and then we can you know uh, make some sort of um, modulized code and then we really use this code for different purpose. So I am going to talk about TypeScript today and then little little bit about uh, HTML Canvas, which is an inbuilt sort of um, API from the browser. As long as you have a browser there's uh, some uh, API called Canvas. So we can create the Canvas API where we draw something. So, I mean, as I said, we are going to, you know, creating, um, create some sort of very low level uh, graphics like geometry such as point and line, and which is actually sort of a mathematic object. And then in order to visualize uh, you can use the Canvas or WebGL or Rhino platform or through this Max because they're supported their own graphics library. So we are interested in developing our own some sort of mathematic geometry that can learn in different platforms. Maybe it, it, based on the syntax, we can maybe a little bit like refactor the code, you know. But yeah, I think this is a really good, really good point that I, that I want to make people starting. 
So now, uh, today's like a work, uh, research overview is this one. So I'm gonna show you the video. Actually, the, there is a, my YouTube uh, video where you can see all the uh, demo video there. And then we are going to mainly focus on the TypeScript and then some drawing uh, geometry using the you know, Canvas API. Um, yeah, so let me a little bit zoom in here. So um, this is the several project that I developed several years ago, but um, this is a little bit different um, things. It has nothing to do, I mean, it's not strongly connected to the, the today's workshop, but the reason I'm sure this one is to, to you guys is because as I said, if you want to draw something, we basically dealing with something on the spatial information, like a space in a space, right? So meaning that we need to define some numbers to describe any geometry in a spatial environment, such as vector, yeah? Three numbers, X, Y, and Z. And the other number, uh, uh, sorry, so, and then if you have a multiple vectors, we can simply connect multiple vectors to make a, a line, right? And then also we can close the, the end point of the line and then the starting point and the line, we, we, make it, we can make a, a, like, like a polygon things. So this is all about like the geometry stuff. So today, yeah, we are a little bit talk about like the geometry things. Uh, this is a sort of the dynamic system. So, I mean, the HTML canvas that we are going to learn today has a two different sort of rendering type. I mean, the graphics tool out there is that they actually support two different things. One is just a static renderer. They just render one time. And the other way around is that we can, make some dynamic renderers keep looping based on the parameter or based on the, the interaction that you, um, um, then you give, like a, by sliding slider or some input value or things like that. So in the canvas or in an HTML, so we can also achieve this kind of um, you know, a dynamic simulation and some you know, the agent-based design systems stuff. So actually, we are going to talk about this topic tomorrow. And this is also similar material, but that one is also, I, because as I said in the uh, uh, lecture video, I'm very interested in data at different scale, in different domain. The landscape is also, we can pick up our landscape as a geometry data. So if you guys are interested in it, I highly recommend you guys visit my YouTube channel and then enjoy it. If, if you have any question, please leave a message and then I'm happy to discuss the passion or disc uh, discussion. Yeah. So this is the, uh, the other sort of material. Um, as I said, you know, this is more about like a fabrication. I'm not a like fabrication professional or expertise, but again, in the, in the, in the geometry, there's a lot, a lot of data. So um, there's two ways of you know, looking at these data. So one way is to manipulation, right? So we wanna design some, drawing something or like a, you know, transform the shapes. But the other way around is we wanted to mig uh, migrate or translate the information in the digital world to the physical world, like a fabrication things. So at the time, maybe we need to think about like the material and you know, how we you know, fabricate, how we assemble in the physical world. There's a lot of uh, things that we need to consider. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is all about like a vector, line, you know, mesh, things like that. They are, they're essentially the same to me. So actually we can, um, yeah, we can just actually can, we can start from this workshop here. So there's a link, yeah, I'm gonna click it and jump to new environment where we can learn TypeScript. The code pen, there's actually similar environment online, but I, the reason I picked the code pen is a uh, very straightforward and then you guys can make your own sort of um, um, like a, how can, how, can, how can I say, like a playground. You can also copy paste my code to execute your code. I mean, I mean for the proof of concept, I sometimes use the code pen because it's very straightforward and then I can tweak and then I can see the result in real time. So before I start, I um, quickly uh, wanted to mention one thing. So as I said, um, we basically um, want to learn um, TypeScript, right? But only JavaScript is the language that can execute on the browser. 
So actually there's something uh, we need to um, take care of behind the scene, but in the code pen, we directly uh, type TypeScript, okay? By doing this, like uh, click this uh, the gear icon, and we have uh, the JS stands for JavaScript, and there's uh, some JavaScript process. So I'm, I usually pick the um, TypeScript because I, we must pick TypeScript. You know? Otherwise, the um, the code is not executed. Just for your information. So here, TypeScript. So for you guys, because we have been learning Python, so I'm trying to make this material by compiling Python and TypeScript. Yeah. So I assume that we are not expertise for the Python, but at least you know the, what the syntax does in the Python, right? So we're gonna compare and how we you know, think a little bit differently in order to create the TypeScript on the basis of the knowledge about Python, okay? So in the Python, yeah, um, we just type in the name of the variable and then using the equal sign, we can um, save, this uh, save some number or string inside of the variable, right? This is what, it, what, it, what, it, what we did in the Python, correct? So in the JavaScript, there's a three different way actually. One way is using the bar keyword, or constant, constant, and let. Like I say bar, I'm oh, sorry. Bar, let, and constant, const. I'm not going to talk about the difference deeply because uh, it has something to do with the uh, scope and then like uh, the memory occupy and things like that. So we are not interested in, we are interested in visualizing and processing data, right? So we can focus in. So, but one thing I can tell you directly uh, is that I recommend you guys use two of uh, the, um, the prefix, let's say, let or const. If you want to make a variable, you must use the let. Otherwise, we want to make a constant variable, then we can say const. We never, we, are, we couldn't modify or change the value if you declare the variable with the constant, okay? So in the constant values, it's like a fixed value, which we cannot like uh, change, which is actually really good in terms of developing your application, which is not that simple. As the application is bigger and bigger, we are human beings, easy to forget, but that kind of things is actually, you know, guide our coding style or the, the, the flow of the data and logics. So I simply, okay, so actually I can do select all of them by shift, Yes. and then control slash means it's command cloud, right? And then there's a there's a, a console window. If you click it, you can see console. But, I, but I'm not a big fan for that console. So we're gonna open the more like a, a inbuilt um, console uh, in the Chrome. By the way, I use the Chrome. Do not use the Edge or uh, what, is, what is the browser, the old browser in Microsoft. Um, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they, they make the world worse. So we just wanted to use the, the Chrome browser, by the way. So the shortcut to trigger the open the, um, the console, console window, we can press Control Shift and I, and we can simply open this console. Otherwise, you can click this um, the button, and there's a icon as a more tool. And then here is a developer tools, okay? If you click it, you can, you can have the new window, then this is actually the, the place where we can print something, okay? So I'm going to go up here. So, control slash, and it automatically execute, yeah. And then we are able to see like a 10 number, right? Yeah, it's not that you know, hard. Only difference is just the lag, right? Okay, great, let's, let's it's uncommented this one here. So I'm going to create the a um, the string, right? And then my string, and then this is the integer, and the float, and boolean. This is very in you know, the same concept in Python. So I'm not I'm not you guys, I'm not forcing you guys to learn new thing. Just you know reuse what we already have. Okay. And then I'm trying to print it by using console.log. 
what we can learn from this line of code is, oh, console is some of a class or object because it has a dot notation here. And then, that after, let, let me actually type in console dot. And then we can see multiple uh, functions that are already inbuilt. As far as I know, one guy in Microsoft, he developed the TypeScript things. Actually, TypeScript is nothing um, sort of a, a not conventional things. It's like, a, as I said, like a superset of JavaScript. We basically create the JavaScript by creating some TypeScript. And TypeScript will automatically generate the uh, JavaScript that we can learn on the browser. So anyhow, so we have multiple function. Uh, somebody already built it, so we just take advantage of the function, right? So we have a log here, and then parenthesis, parenthesis, meaning that this is a, a sort of function, right? So if you guys wanted to know what is the input value or parameter or argument, we can, we can Google it, right? So um, I'm not going to do this because we have limited time. So yeah, I'm just simply put like my string here, integer, float number, and boolean, and then you automatically execute. So uh, hello world, seven, 1.23, right? It's identical, it's true and true. And the only difference, I mean, um, the boolean value is that we use the low case for the T. In the Python, we need a capital letter in the first, uh, first character of, of true, right? So this is a different. So we need to follow in this, in this this is kind of the syntax. Yeah, otherwise the computer cannot understand. It, it's gonna be break and then claim something. Yeah, so I'm going to comment out. Comment out here. Oh. I think I, I need to uncomment here. So here, oh, oh we have a types of function, yeah? So it basically uh, same as the type in Python, yeah? So just think about it. We have uh, some variable, variables. So we have no idea what kind of data inside of this variable. So we need to check the type. If this value is a Boolean value, then we have a special logic, for example, to process this Boolean value. Otherwise, we can also compare like, is it string or is it number? Is it string? We want to split by the comma, right? So we have, we, we have a chance to set up this kind of uh, the, the, the data flow based on the, the types of data, right? So in this case, we also have here um, the types of function, yeah. But, you know, JavaScript is also getting evolved. I mean, JavaScript is sort of, sort of a nickname, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Then the actual name is ECMAScript. So ECMAScript is getting evolved. I think it's already version seven or eight. I have no idea, but usually a lot of people use ECMAScript five or version six. Yeah. So as the getting as the syntax is uh, the version is getting evolved, the syntax is going to be a little bit different. But um, in this case, for types of we need to make a, some a, a space between the function and the variable that we want to inspect. Right, so as I said, this is identical uh, function in Python here. So we can just simply check the type because at the end of the day, we're gonna import the CSVIP file or JSON file in the TypeScript to visualize it on the web browser. Yeah, fantastic, right? So uh, now we are reach to the number here. You can uncomment this one. Yeah, I'm keep using lab because I have no idea. Maybe at the, uh, during the, 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 the process or for or if statement, sometimes we need to update the variable. So let's try using lab in this case. So I, I just assign the variable names, the number, the num, <laughs> the num, and then three and two, I console it. We have a two, uh, no, the number. Okay, so here, um, I, I actually created the number, uh, the num. Uh, basically, I use the let keyword, right? Meaning that I declare uh, a variable and then assign some memory in the somewhere. And then we have a three number and then we push this data to that memory. And then the num actually remember the address of this memory. This is how the computer works actually. And then I'm just trying to overwrite 
uh, using um, the same um, uh, redeclare the number, but this is not good practice actually. So this uh, the uh, best practice is just use the, the name without the let because we already declare this variable, right? So this is the the right way to use. So we assi uh, we assign the uh, three to uh, uh, the num variable, and then we update basically update the data. Uh, so it's two, right? So that's why we are able to see the two here, correct? And also we have the number, let's say float number in this case, and then we have a number uh, A and B. We can add them, and then we can see here. Yeah, I mean it depends on the the program language, but uh, in the Python we try to add integer number and float number, right? And then it becomes float number, right? But here I can see it. Uh, we have integer number and float number, and then I add them, and then the, the sum is just five. It's sort of an integer, but I feel like they're not that strict in terms of the compiling the number. But I mean, this is good to know, yeah, just, just in case. So again, I declare the num and then assign one, number one, inside of the my num variable, you can first. And then I use this uh, um, uh, fashion that we uh, can, that we, we, we learned in Python, right? We basically increase um, um, the number. So in this case, the final number is a four, right? Because it has a one, and then I add one more one, and then it becomes two, and then I add one more one, and it becomes three, and uh, add one more one, and it becomes four. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, this is the same as the, I mean, I'm trying to make uh, the identical material for you guys uh, as uh, the Python so that we can uh, simply understand what is the difference between the Python syntax and type, TypeScript syntax. So this is nothing special. We power two and then multiply 0.5, 0 0.5 pi, and then plus 3.14 pi, yeah. Okay, I'm going to comment it out. Then comment, yeah. Same structure. So, for the comment for one line, we can use like a, a double slash, yeah. They automatically um, comment it out. In the Python, we can use the parallel sign here, right? But in the maybe she like language, Java, she, 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 sharp, she plus plus, she. JavaScript, TypeScript, they use this uh, uh, double uh, slash for the command. And then for the multiple line, we use this, this, this fashion, slash star, and then in the reverse way, star first and then slash. And then you can create a, whatever command uh, on your side. So here, I have a two variable, one is a string, the other one is a number, all right? And then I using the comma fashion, yeah. Then I'm able to print like digital world 2020. So what if I can do like this, right? And then I can save directly. Yeah, there's no space. And then this number is become string, right? Yeah, because um, I directly add um, basically string plus number. So this uh, string, uh, sorry, this integer number becomes string. Yeah. This is the difference between uh, the plus uh, operation and comma operation in the console log function, okay? This is a little bit minor thing, but as you engineer your own sort of data pipeline, um, this is become a little bit issue. So um, just for your information, yeah. Great, so we have a string here. So I'm going to comment our string. So far, so good, right? It's, it's not that hard, right? <laughs> because we at least know how Python works. We try to expand the knowledge um, you know, um, by, um, on the basis of the Python syntax to TypeScript things. So this is actually identical you know, as the Python things. So we have hello world string here. So I'm directly consoled right? 
so that we are able to see like a hello world. And then I'm trying to index the first uh, uh, character of this string, right? So I expect that page, right? Because we are we use the zero base index, right? Just like Python. TypeScript is same. So actually, you know what? If you learn the TypeScript, uh, this syntax is very similar to even to JavaScript. It makes sense, right? Even I think the TypeScript is a little bit strict than JavaScript. So we basically learn three different languages in three days. Crazy, right? Okay, so we have a three. Uh, so zero, one, two, three. So we are able to print this L character here, right? And then it's minus one. Hmm. What if I do minus two? Hmm. Oh, now we know the in the Python, if you if we use the minus one, and it give, basically give us the, the last um, the character in the string, because minus one is indicating that the last index, right? But how do we how do we create the same the, the function or the same like a operation? So in this case, we need to we can do this like, actually. Um, text and length. This is the inbuilt function for the, uh, um, let's say, um, TypeScript. But again, the length is always, we need to minus one, right? So you, I'm trying to remember you guys, the push you guys to remember what we learned previously. So because we starting from zero, but index give us like the actual number starting from one. So in order to point to the last character, we need to measure the entire, the length of the string and then we need to always, we must, you know, um, minus one, okay, to that length. Then we are successfully access the, the, the last index, right? And also, what if I wanted to, you know, um, print the, the middle of the character in that string, right? The same as the before, we can measure the entire length here, right? Just like entire length, and then we can divide by two, right? And then just for uh, just 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 for safeguard, we cannot use like as I said, one point one point two or some float uh, float number. We always it's good to go to make them as integer number because this is very safer. So I just use the flow. What it does is basically if you have like one point two, it becomes just one. 1.5, 1.9, it becomes just one. Yeah, this is what the, the flow does. If you have, uh, if you want to know more, more information, just Google it. There's a lot of information and examples out there. So, um, yeah, so we are pretty much done in this uh, part. And then, as I said, in the, in the, in the Python, we use length function, right? But here, as I said, you know, this is the class, string class, meaning that there's a some inbuilt function somebody built, right? So we just take advantage of it. However, there's no parenthesis. We expect a parenthesis because, um, you know, some, fit, some functions belong to the class or object. But, you know, if there's a no parenthesis, we can consider this is just parameter. There's no, uh, there's no like execution. This, this information is just the object gonna uh, uh, possess, possess in the first place. So um, <clears throat> tomorrow we are going to learn the, how to create the object class. Uh, in, the, in that time, we are uh, learning uh, how to create the parameter or function the inside of the class. So maybe tomorrow I can talk about this talking a little bit deeper. So, but, now we just, you know, good to go, just uh, know uh, the string has uh, the parameter and let's say um, the variable called length and the return value is the actual length of the string, okay? Here, in the Python, yeah, just like the same fashion here, the string, has uh, their own specialized inbuilt function to make them lowercase or uppercase, right? Same as Python. 
the TypeScript has a uh, same exactly same function, but a little bit different name. I don't know why they <laughs> make a different name, but we need to follow the, the syntax, as I said. So the syntax is same syntax is in Python's upper. In the TypeScript, just two uppercase and parentheses close, or open and close. So now we have hello digital world. This is all row case, right? And this is all uppercase because we use this function. Yeah. Um, and then you can jump. You can uncomment this one. Yeah, okay. I think I can increase the window a little bit. So I use, there's a sort of a multiple way, but I can say there's two ways that we can use uh, in terms of concatenate the um, strings, okay? So using the plus, so we can concatenate. So there's a two different um, sort of, uh, uh, is there any text here? Okay, yeah, text we declare uh, here, right? And then the string is we declare here. It has um, the hello digital world. So there's a, basically three different strings. One string, this is second string, the third string. We basically concatenate three different strings into one. So this is the string. Yeah, so we have a, uh, there should be comma here. Yeah. Increase a little bit. Oops. Okay. And the other way around is we can use the literal uh, fashion. So uh, I, I, I can't remember the name of the, um, the key, but it's back part. It's, in, it's next to number one in, on your keyboard. So we use this backward open and close, and then we can, uh, this is syntax we must follow. Uh, we see the uh, dollar sign and then curly brace and then curly brace. So it, you, it, this function is identical as this function. So it depends on you what is uh, you know the um, you know the useful way or familiar way that you guys you guys want to use it. So there's uh, some information here. So object literal. Okay, so I think I can read over the command. So there's more information that you guys can learn something here. Great. And casting, yeah. This is the same format we learned Python yesterday. So we have a three as string, right? And then we have the float number 3.0, right? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Let me comment it out. Great. Um, so I'm just, my string is this one, right? So we expect there's a, there's a three, right? Actually, let me clean up here. I'm confused as well. And then we trigger to execute. Come on. Save. Come on. <laughs> okay. I can just, okay, here you go. So, um, this console log and my string, interesting. Where is my string here? Okay, let me comment it out. There's something wrong. Make clear here. I save to trigger re execute. Let's say is save. Interesting. So, anyhow, so this is nothing special. Um, we have a console log and then we have a string, and then using the comma fashion, I'm trying to concatenate here, right? So I'm gonna comment it out. I don't know why it doesn't work, but um, that's weird. So 
So here, uh, my string number. So we know inside of this variable, there's a string three, which is character, it's not a number, right? And we try to uh, cast string to number and then multiply 10, right? This is a, a in, the, in the Python we did, we use the float function, but in, in, in the TypeScript, we can use this number function to cast string to the real number. So that we are expect, um, expecting uh, C30, uh, right? Because we have, a, we have a three and then multiply three by 10, obviously 30. So here, I uh, before cast my float number here. I expect uh, this is the um, the um, string. Oh, no, no, no. My float number is a number or integer number or float number. And then once we cast real number, let's say number two string, then we we expect that this is the string. So this is the string value. Uh, I think this is a little bit weird. Yeah, the before number after casting, this is a string. Yeah, a bit confused. I'm sorry. Yeah. So now, same as the number or string, we have the value true. This is the, you know, the looks like the Boolean value, but this is the string, right? Because it has a double quotation. So we want to um, check what is the type, right? And then if you, if you use the type and then that they, it prints, this is a string, it makes sense, right? And then once we cast um, string value to the actual Boolean value, then it gives us the Boolean, which is a data type. So this is nothing special, it's very uh, identical um, execution like Python things. Do you guys have any question for now? Okay. Okay, the question. Yay. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, today's Monday. I'm really exhausted because of my work, you know, so I need to prepare this material after this two hours meeting and then I have to do the other Korean version of the meeting. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, this is really fun to share knowledge. Yeah, anyhow. So we have um, the other step as a the conditional statement, right? As I said, the programming is all about like making looping based on the condition, right? Until the condition meet, we need to do something repeatedly, right? So condition is really important in terms of the creating your own design algorithm, yeah? So I created two values here, true and false, right? I'm trying to like uh, the, uh, uh, compare to two values here. Uh, let me comment it out. Yeah, here we go. So, um, yeah, this is the actually true value, right? This is false. We ask the, the TypeScript, is it the same? They say no, it makes sense, right? And then they are uh, um, true and false, they are different. Is it, is it true, they are different? Then this is true, right? So it's nothing special, just like a Python. However, the, in the TypeScript, there's a more strict comparison. So for more information, uh, so we can go to this. Um, web page. So um, actually, you know what, we can use the comparison using double equal sign. But in the TypeScript or JavaScript environment, many development uh, expertise to use the strict comparison using one more like equal sign. So there's a reason here. So if you, got, if you guys want to know more, then please visit the website here, there. Clean up. Yeah, so yeah, same as uh, before, we have A 
variable which contain 10 string, yeah, and uh, sorry, number, number 10, and B has a uh, 10 string. And then we try to compare A and B, they are false, it makes sense, right? But however, if I cast from the, uh, the string to the number, then the result is true. Yeah. And then also we have the logical operation. This is a very straightforward, it's actually exploratory, right? So it's nothing special, yeah. It's a Python, so I'm, just like, I'm going to skip it. And save, just in case. So um, we try to uh, measure the type here, right? We know this is the integer number, right? But this is a float number, correct? Actually, you know what? The right representation is we need to, uh, we need to uh, append F. This is actually fashion for C sharp or C++ for Java things. But there's no particular thing, uh, things, so we just you know, get rid of the F here. Um, you know, by looking at the result from executing this line, we know, oh, actually TypeScript has no idea between uh, the integer number and string number, right? Because they consider this is true, right? This is good to know, right? And also, um, we, uh, there is actually two, two different things. Yeah, I mean, here, here is a, the, the function to parse, like a, let's say convert, cast uh, the string as a number. So we can explicitly mention the integer, right? So that uh, the A become integer, right? And then B is just uh, the float number. So let's say, I'm confused. I want to connect out here. So they say this is a true. Okay. So this is the logical operation. Um, same as Python. So I'm going to skip it. Yeah, I think this is good. So this is the best practice. So in order to declare, we, we need to use the, the, the designate keyword let. And then we have A and B as a variable. So each variable has a number three and number five, right? So if A is bigger than five, then we print it. This is the syntax that I use in the Python. So this is the TypeScript. So only difference is that we use the double, um, um, uh, what is this? Uh, my brain is stopped right now. Uh, colon, yeah, colon, <laughs> yeah. So we used colon and then make space, like a full space will tap, yeah? Because otherwise the scoping is not working in Python. This is just a strict rule we need to follow in the Python. However, uh, in the TypeScript or Java or C Java, C++, they use the curly race to define the scope, okay? So actually I can do like this. It doesn't matter, yeah, as long as we are able to um, maintain the syntax, okay? But this is, I think, a good to see. It's like a visual block, right? So if, once you use the if, we need the parenthesis open, and then there's a logical operation and need to close the parenthesis and then calibrate, calibrate and calibrate. And, and also we can compare the, the next sort of uh, the logical operation. If the condition doesn't meet in, the, in two different situations, otherwise we can always execute this line. Yeah, it's like the same as the Python, but a little bit different syntax, yeah. Make it out. And the loop, yeah, loop is really important things because we are doing some programming, right? So actually there is a, a lot of way, more than, more than five or six way to loop through all the list to a string. Yeah, I, but I don't want to mention all of them because it makes you guys confused, yeah? So in this case, 
I just wanted to use like a very simple and old fashion. Yeah, that possibly you can apply this, this syntax C sharp or C++ plus Java things. So this is a very simple rule. We have a for, just like an if, right? Once you use the for, and then we use parentheses to make some condition, yeah? And then there's a three things, split by semicolon, yeah? One scope, second scope, the last scope. The first scope is a defined um, sort of a starting number for here. And then the second scope, we assign some condition. Until, until the condition is uh, validate, the looping is keep going. Correct, right? And then this is the uh, one extra operation after the individual loop, right? So let's say in this case, we have i, which is zero, right? The, if the zero is a smaller than three, then we're gonna keep loop so that we are able to see um, I don't like the environment, I guess. <laughs> it, was, it was good, but I don't know, for some reason, it's a little bit weird. Come on, we are busy. So I expect, okay, here. So um, here's a hello world, one time, two times, three times. Can you see the small, uh, the, the circle number here with the circle? So you just uh, duplicate things and then just override and then, yeah. Maybe you can do like this, I, yeah? So there's a hello world zero, hello world one, hello world two, right? So this is, I think, uh, the most useful uh, and common fashion to make a photo in TypeScript. Again, there's a lot of way, but I don't want to mention because it's going to be you know, confused. And here, you know, we have a fully customized, like a photo here. So. Rather than starting from zero, we want to start from three, yeah? And then you, uh, until the conditions are met, and then we are going, we are going to loop. And then individual loop, we want to execute that one, yeah? I mean, what happens if I do this? Yeah. The follow is never, wow, oh my God, look at that, <laughs> yeah? The follow is going to be crazy, it's like a, a it actually breaks your uh, application, so just be careful. Just like a while loop. See that? Yeah, it already <laughs> excuse this many, this many times. Crazy. Okay. So here, mom, stop. Yeah, let me, let me sort of um, refresh the website here. Yeah, they are going crazy. You know, in case the Python or other application, the application is just 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 going to stop, and then we need to, you know, force to quit. So I'm trying to refresh. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay, great. This is the, just compare, you know, between the Python and the TypeScript and just get familiar with. I don't expect that you memorize uh, everything, you guys. All the material is on the online. I'm not going to remove at the, uh, after this workshop. So as long as you guys need, just download. Maybe in case that I uh, relocate the, the file uh, position, then maybe it's going to be break, then please let me know. I will reconnect the material to the, the Medium page, anyhow. So I'm going to comment it out. And then iteration things. So in the Python, we declare the number, how many number, you know, how many times we wanted to make some loop, right? In this case, we have 10 here, and then using the range, and then we can make some 10, 10 loop here. This is the uh, exactly same the algorithm, but different syntax, correct? So we use the let uh, uh, keyword to declare the variable, and then we loop through, and then this is just condition, but there's no parenthesis in Python, but we need the parenthesis for TypeScript. 
and then calibrate to define the scope. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, see like a zero and odd, uh, odd, odd number, odd number, odd number, like a three, five, seven, things like that. So this is a while loop. In the Python, we do this, but you know, only difference, as I said, parentheses to, to, to declare some condition, right? As long as the condition is meet, the loop is keep going. And then we use the curly brace to de de declare some scopes, scope. The same, nothing special. And this is the, like a, let's say double for loop, yeah. We have just just forget about this um, for loop. We just we can focus on this one, right? J J is zero, and then the condition is the less than three, right? And then we're gonna increase uh, one by one as the loop is going 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 through, right? But the the, the, the reason it breaks is because it also need like an I, which is the other dimension here. So now we have a double for loop. So let me follow the flow, the flow of the execution. So the i is zero, right? And then simply pass it. And then I meet the other for loop, z is zero, right? And then I print zero, zero, right? And then we are inside of this first, the, the second loop, and then we repeat, we visit here. But you know, we gonna uh, we did increase number one to the j, so j is no longer zero. J is a, j is um one, but still one is less than three. So condition is meet, and we do uh, execute this line again, and then the if the j is a three, compare yeah. three yeah. equal three and uh, compare three and, and three is not. It's, it's, it's the same as a three, right? It's not smaller than three, right? So the condition is a break. So we do not need to reach this scope, right? And then we eventually come to second loop of this the, the for loop outer, right? Yeah. So this is the, the yeah, simple for loop thing. Do you guys have any question for, for now? Yeah, I mean, there's a, I, I highly recommend you guys to get familiar with Python first because Python is more useful, I guess. And then um, this is actually how I learn the new language. If I uh, learn a new language like Kotlin or other Swift in order to develop the iOS uh, tool or application things, so I'm not going to like uh, learn some one-on-one -on -one book from scratch. I'm just trying to compare uh, the knowledge that I, that I already familiar with uh, that I already familiar with, and then oh, oh, in the Swift they they represent like this, yeah. They are a little bit different syntax. Oh, they have do this. Uh, they they have. I don't need to do this like in this uh, Kotlin language, for example. So I think this is the good way to learn new thing, you know, um, by taking advantage of your previous knowledge. So here. Where we are. Okay, so uh, the TypeScript and data structure. Let's click it. Um, the data structure. So we have uh, array. Some, some people call it array or list or matrix if there is a two dimension. Yeah. The more than two dimension, some people call it tensor, you know. Um, so it's like a, you know, nice and, um, so we have the, the list A variable and the list B variable. And they are both list because, as I said, we have a, um, a square bracket. Yeah. I mean, the string itself is a list, but we create the, basically one list and then as a first index, we insert this thing, right? So you can just do it like that. I don't know why they become angry. Okay. <laughs> Oh, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> okay, let me refresh. 
Great. Eh, um, so, well, uh, control shift I you were to you were open from the. Uh, Google Converse con ella y todo, pero me escribió porque uh, quería usar el mouse y la persona de 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 la So I print the list A, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. This is expected result, obviously. And then there's list A, uh, index three. So go one, two, three. So I expect number four. There's a number four, yeah? We just keep like a, a remind what we already learned, right? And then B, we expect the string inside of the, the wrist because we already in the, the string inside of the array or wrist. And then we use, actually we use a pen, right? We, we use a pen. Uh, okay, somebody likes pen. Okay. I do, okay. Angel. Hey, do you have your mic? Ninja. Muy, muy. I mean, please mute clasecitas de engranajes y motores a construir un Angel, esa parte todavía, por favor. La verdad, me que sí. Did you guys hear my voice? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 so, um, Okay, so I didn't recognize. Okay, please mute your mic unless you have a question. Um, hello? Hello? Can you mute his mic? Okay. Oh, yeah, I think I can do that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pero, eh, if, you, if you click on igual, the, the blue button algo, next to his name, or on his name, value. it's like, yeah, there you go. Okay, sorry, Kyle. Okay, great. Oh, oh my God, I didn't recognize. Thank you, thank you for letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great, yeah. Where we are? Uh, yeah, okay, here. Um, wait, um, I can actually leave the message here. No, this is just a, just a Americano with lots of water. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so we used to use uh, a pen function to insert item to the list in Python. Correct, right? However, in the TypeScript or JavaScript, we use the push. Yeah, here. In the, in the, 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 for those who are familiar with the C sharp in Python, for example, they use the add, like a, in the capital A. Yeah, there's a fashion. This is just simply syntax. So I think um, we just follow it. Yeah, it's nothing special. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then we. This is the list B. Inside of this list B, the first the first item is the string here, right? The second item I expect is a uh, three and six. So we print this the, the, the second the the list B list. Yeah. So here, there's a uh, inside of the list. The, the, in the zero index, hello world, which is string, the, the first index, the second index is three, you, uh, three and six in order here, right? It's, it's very straightforward, right? Um, I'm going to comment it out. Uh, I think it's here. There we go. So in Python, yeah, we create a string and then we print it using the split functions to you know, uh, decompose a string on the basis of the comma, right? So the expected return value is the list. It has its own character split by the comma, right? This is what we did in Python. So here, same as the Python, oh, they are, they are same, right? 
well, which is good. <laughs> so we have a same uh, string here, and then I simply print it A, B, C, D, E, F here, and then I split and then return value. I'm just basically overwrite, overwrite here. Yeah, the return value. And then the, I'm, I wanted to make a for loop starting from zero, which is convention, right? And the condition is the, actually, we want to loop through entire uh, the elements inside of the list. So we just use the length. But don't worry about it because the length is always uh, the bigger than the i. Well, because we, in order to the, get the, the right number, we always minus one, right? However, we use this fashion here. This fashion. If you wanted to use like this, and then we can, we need to do uh, this uh, one, one more like uh, operation to deduct number one. But I mean, you don't need to know. But I'm just for your information. Yeah. So anyhow, so we individual loop. We increase the i number using the i number. We're gonna index the individual uh, the, the the entity or elements in that list. So that we are able to print A, B, C, D, E, F here, right? So this is a sort of a, a very conventional fashion here for, and then, well, this is a little bit weird, right? We never thought about it kind of things, but this is, as I said, multiple things supported by TypeScript. So this is the other way around of the maker's loop. So the my data, we know the my data is basically list, correct? And then that notation is meaning that there's a some function we can we can take advantage of it. So it's a for each. Just, just keep it. Uh, be careful. The, the 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 character E is a capital letter. Okay, and then parenthesis open and parenthesis close. Yeah, this is just syntax. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why people make this like this, but we can uh, create a variable. This variable gonna contain the individual uh, entity throughout the loop. In this case, the first loop, D contains A, and then for the next loop, D contains B, yeah? So I can just print them. So now we have A, B, C, D, E, F in order, right? This is from for each because I just concatenate, right? So you can just simply uh, uh, to follow the line by line as a computer, very, very slow computer, one line, one line, and then you can predict what value is uh, the inside of this variable and how we update the variable, yeah. So I think this is also a really good practice. But keep in mind, this is just syntax, um, yeah. But you don't need to worry about it because we know this basic, you know, for loop syntax, which is universally, you can, you can apply. I just uh, mentioned here, just for you, for your information here. So metrics. So yeah, metrics is nothing special, right? This is sort of a two-dimensional array things, as far as uh, uh, we know, right? Luckily, in terms of the declare the uh, the metrics uh, in TypeScript, it's very s similar to to Python, right? But again, we need to put the let or constant, but I recommend you guys for the, just use lab for now, yeah. So, um, this is the first loop. Just forget about this line here. So first loop, we expect this list, let's say we can, we can call it item, this item gonna be written, yeah. And then we know this item is list, so that we can append additional for loop inside of the, the, the for loop outer here. So that's why I do this kind of, kind of function, yeah. So think about it. We have, uh, let's say a, uh, maybe number is better, a, 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 for example, yeah. So we expect the, the in general, right? So matrix need to be like a same like dimension, like the same the length of the array. But in this case, 
the first lengths, I don't know how many, but there are, let me, let me, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there are seven lists inside the, the, mat, the matrix. Let's say list. This is a list of lists, basically. And then the, the, the second item inside the list is a one, two, three. This is a little bit different. So using this kind of fashion, we are smartly um, um, measure the dynamic length of the, the data inside of the list. Yeah, so to think about it, the real world in the data CSV file or JSON file, we have no idea, right? How long the list is bigger or shorter or, you know. So, I mean, this is all about like, a, as I said, you know, controlling data, create the data pipeline, and then append some condition. Based on the condition, create, uh, create your own design algorithm to make some you know, results. So this is all about like a thinking process. Most importantly, the reason we not we learn we need to learn the syntax is because you know we, we can we can use English to to communicate different people and for the thinking process right. But unfortunately, com computer doesn't understand the, the English right. So we need to under understand their language. The Python is actually interpreter. So Python is basically like a middleman. You know, we just make some script for the Python, and then basically Python. I interpret this one for the like a machine language. Yeah, so this is all about like programming things anyhow. So I don't expect to uh, memorize um, these kind of complex, uh, let's say, it's not complex actually, but a little complex for beginner. Uh, I don't expect to memorize, just copy paste. But most important thing is that understanding why you put the J here with I here, right? This is really important things. So, um, let me print out, yeah. I think this is the same fashion in Python, right? So we, we know this is sort of a two-dimensional array. So the first index is about this array. And the second index is about the individual, the entity or item things, yeah. So let's, I can increase one more dimension here, right? It's gonna be break. So we need to do like zero here because there's a no, uh, um, no, no, no second uh, list inside of the, um, um, the, the array. But however, if I do this, zero, and then I can do like one, zero here. So I expect a zero here. Come on, yeah, <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> you guys, my, my point, right? Great. Um, let me undo for the next class. Okay. So object here. Oops. So just a reminder, you know, oop. in the Python, we declare the, the, the variable name and then using the equal sign to assign something and then using the, the curly brace, correct? Inside of the curly brace, we need to assign two information, one is a key and value, right? Um, and then the in between them, we need to uh, use the colon sign to declare like key pair value things. Luckily, TypeScript, same, which is good, right? So I create the, uh, the my object is same as in Python, yeah? But I, uh, I need to put the let before the variable name. Correct, and then create the simple loop here. Yeah, so in this case, there are, there are many loop, but I'm trying to minimize the confusion. So this is a little bit different syntax that we have been learned, right? So we use in keyword here, in keyword. There's an off keyword, in keyword, like let's say off like this. But just in this case, we just use, can use in keyword for the loop. What it does is basically just like Python. The I value gonna have, um, gonna has the key value here. The first, the I is the NJ, yeah? And then the, the expected value is, is uh, number one. So here, key NJ value is one. And key MJ value is two. Key DJ value is three. This is the, the same operation like Python here. Yeah. So, you know, we are reached at the end of this um, 
um, um, like a exercise here. So as I said, we are doing something in JavaScript. JSON is JavaScript object notation. This is actually JSON file. Yeah, so here's a special function to create this sort of dictionary, what some people say like a map or a dictionary or a class, depends on the domain of people's uh, knowledge, I guess. I mean, because different people have different like a term. Yeah. So anyhow, the JSON is sort of a library so you don't need to uh, import because the, let's say the code panes already take care of it. Yeah. So JSON has a function because we have a dot notation here, right? And then function meaning uh, function means we we need to append like parentheses in order to dump some parameter to to execute the function, right? So my object is this. I simply dump this one using this um, the inbuilt function here. And then I'm, I'm able to get the return value and then just simply print out. So now what I get is this string. Yeah, this is actually just one string, one string. This is one string, yeah. Because it, it uh, the, uh, includes uh, by the double quotation. This is all the just like, um, let's say just string. Yeah, it's nothing special. So, so for example, if you get any sort of the text file or JSON or our other CSV file or GeoJSON file, it is good for you to expect this is just entire really big giant string. So in order to create the JSON file out of this giant string, there's a the other function parse here. So we have this giant string and we just dump in the function called parse belongs to JSON object, correct? And then we basically create the object and then convert to the string and then we reconvert the string to the JSON. Yeah, this is like a reverse engineering things. So the reason I'm, I, I mentioned is because we are we are going to dealing with the JSON or GeoJSON file to visualizing on the web environment. So this is absolutely very you know, a useful function. Actually, I, I, we, we did it use in the Python in Grasshopper, right? I guess so, I think. Yeah, so anyhow, this is the sort of last um, um, exercise for the TypeScript syntax. Do you guys have any question for now? Great, yeah, there's a material, and obviously there's a Google God, so whenever you have a question, ask a Google. This is actually what I did every day. Um, yeah, so this is the basic, the basic TypeScript syntax. We are, are able to learn the TypeScript a little bit easier because we're trying to compare Python that we already know, right? So actually there are more, but I think this knowledge is good to start, yeah. And then particularly after that, as a second material for our hands-on workshop, I'm going to um, draw something on the screen here. Yeah, yeah we have a two points, one black dot and white, white dot, right? So before talking about this uh, um, the exercise and example, again, I wanna make a double check so you need to go to here, just check either double uh, TypeScript or not. If you, if you pick the none, you need to um, follow the JavaScript syntax, but we don't need to do this because we already know the TypeScript. So we simply change the TypeScript because these compilers basically gonna compile our TypeScript to the JavaScript. Yeah, this is the happening behind the scene. And I don't know, um, for those who are already familiar with the uh, HTML, which is sort of a markup, hypertext markup language. So HTML is all about, you can see on the website. Yeah, so HTML is just like a um, um, bone um, in order to, um, let's say, uh, draw the UI, click a button or slide or image, div, table, whatever on the web page. So that's why we are called like a hypertext markup language. So 
this is sort of the other syntax. We have a, a HTML with the, um, um, uh, I forgot uh, my friends always, um, I'm, these days I'm very exhausted. So, so anyhow, this uh, uh, scale, does anyone help me to, <laughs> uh, what, what is this? What is this? Anyhow, yeah, so, yeah, we have a this sign. So once you append this HTML, we need to close, close by slash. This is always a pair, okay? So if I open, I need to close, right? If I open, I need to close. If I open the body, I need to close the body, okay? And then if the body is actually the, the playground where we can append. So I basically append like a simple div with the ID. The ID is just div. So um, I'm going to open the uh, developer tool here. So there's a little small icon here, like a select and uh, element sort of inspections. You click it and then you can draw here. Yeah, you can inspect the item actually. So uh, if I click it, and it gives us some very deep light tree structure. So basically they use the iframe. Yeah, you don't need to worry about it. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say is that it has like a, this kind of structure. So we need to create the, basically declare a div in order to create the canvas that we are going to use to draw. Correct. So I simply append one div and then this is just styling stuff with the height, uh, 400 pixel and 400 pixels. It's always starting from the left top side here. So color is a, uh, uh, this is the uh, hex value. It going, it starting from zero to F, I guess, yeah. So the first number is the R, G, B. If you wanted to draw like a lead canvas, you can do like, like this. Yeah, or like this. Yeah, just this is basically identical. So I'm gonna do green green canvas here. Yeah, because this is really important because we are we are we are going to visualize something. So we, this is the how the uh, TypeScript or canvas understand the color. There's a, the other way around, but I, I can tell you. But this is also one of the generic way to assign the color. Anyhow, so we have a green. Um, the canvas here. So I'm going to quickly describe um, how, how we create the canvas. You don't need to worry about just simply copy paste this code because we are interested in developing the visualization algorithm rather than just duplicate it well. Correct, right? So anyhow, using this keyword, I grab the div, this div, right? And then I create a canvas using this API. Actually, this page, this page itself is document. So using the that notation, we can access some inbuilt function. Anyhow, we can create a canvas and then we, the canvas is an object and then canvas has their own parameter called width and height. So I uh, give the same number, like a not string, this is number, so it should be number, yeah. And then I append this canvas to div as the tree structure that I show you using the inspector, right? And then using this canvas, I, I, I make an instance of, of, about the, the canvas context. I know it's a little bit confused, but um, yeah, but it's nothing special. Just once you understand, it's just, just trivial, yeah. And then I intentionally uh, the translate the, the position of canvas because as I said, this is always zero, zero. So, but what I did is this is the zero, zero because I translate. So I receive the, I, I basically ask, I basically ask the, uh, the width of the canvas and then multiply 0 0.5, meaning that I want to get the midpoint. Yeah. And then I, and then I, I get the other midpoint against the X axis and Y axis, right? And then using this number, I might translate, right? So actually without this one, this white dot is 
around here. Yeah, see, this is the white dot. So I'm just translate. Yeah, it's nothing special. And then I zoomed in using the scale function. This is all in inbuilt function. If you uh, want to learn more about the canvas, uh, there's a lot of like API things. I'm gonna introduce. I mean, there's a link on the Medium page anyhow. So this is this is what I did for the creating this environment. Yeah, I mean. You don't need to worry about it. just create one environment and then you can you can reuse this environment. This is the beauty of the computer programming things. And then this is a very, very low level um, draw function in order to you know, render one circle here. So this is just a syntax we need to follow. So first of all, we need to declare the color like this. Yeah. Let's say we can draw like a red color here. Yeah, this is a red color. And then begin path mean we, we are going to tell the graphics card, hey, we are going to draw something. So I'm gonna give you some information. Please good to go. Please ready to go, okay? So, and then I call the arc function. This is X position and Y position. This is a radius, yeah? Um, and then this is the starting angle, which is radian. And then 3.4 is like a pi. So we multiply to pi, meaning that we are able to, full, able to draw a full circle, yeah? This is just syntax. So, um, I mean, this kind of API is not that complicated. There's a very small number of the API compared to the wet gel. So I think it's very straightforward. So we, we, we can reach that part at the end of the day. And then once you, we draw the arc, and then we ask them, okay, I'm done. Please close your uh, drawing execution, yeah? And then I'm going to fill with this fill color. The order doesn't matter, but this order is really important. Before draw, you need to begin path, use the begin path function. And then once you've done your draw, we need to close this path, correct? So I just uh, encapsulate, sort of encapsulate, make a function uh, to, do complex job here. So there's a link, there's a lot of information. I encourage you guys to go to that website. Anyhow, so this is the one way to declare a function, yeah? In the Python, we declare a function like that, right? Path, and then maybe arc, and, and colon, semicolon, and blah, 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 functions here, right? But here, in the JavaScript, there's a two way. This is sort of old fashioned. This is a new way using the arrow function. Yeah, this is arrow function. I mean, there's a lot of things behind the scene because the context is different if you use the just old fashioned function. So arrow function is actually prevent from sort of uh, confusing context anyhow. So um, what I'm saying is uh, this is a little bit complex. I just encapsulate and make a simple function. And what it does is it just give me, you know, X and Y, and then I'm gonna draw a circle you know, as a default, because I have a default value. So I'm declaring, not, not just only declaring the value, but also I just uh, give us some default numbers or variable. And also the difference between the, I think this is a little bit confusing part between uh, TypeScript, and, TypeScript and Python. So once you uh, create the, the variable name, and then you need to define the type. Yeah, this is the, the little computing part, but actually that was really useful to develop the application anyhow. So this is the inbuilt function. You don't need to worry about, actually your code goes here. Yeah. So I declare a variable. I declare a variable here, right? And then I update like a minus nine P. Yeah. And then B, actually this is the more better representation, I guess, X, yeah, X. And this is y, right? And then x and y. So, as I said, we translate the entire coordinate system, like halfway along the x and halfway along the y. So we basically center the plane inside of this canvas, correct? So minus 19 and 19 is here. Yeah, this is, I mean, the architectural designer more familiar with this kind of the coordinate system, I guess. 
maybe at the card system starting from here is zero, zero, and X and Y, but you can see this is, this is the zero and zero, right? This is X and Y, this is minus X and minus Y, yeah? So here, I draw, I, I declare a list here, yeah? And then the minimum is a Z starting from zero and maximum is five, right? And then make a step, just like a list in Python. So I use the min numbers for starting number and the max number is the, the, the last number in terms of the looping. And then I have a step and then multiply the number and then I basically prepare a, a, a list of number. So here, what we have is this number, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Makes sense, right? And then using this function, this is a list itself, right? This is list itself, and so I'm, I use the for each function. So we expect i is, uh, the first number is going to be zero here. Yeah, and then two, four, six, eight in order. At the end of the loop, uh, we are received the number a, right? So the a multiply 10 and this is goes, goes to x, this is goes to y. So that's why they increase along the x. And then in terms of the y, there's a minus here. Yeah, this is actually plus, yeah. Okay, great. And then we can move quickly a little bit. So I, I create the range uh, as a list here. And so previously we have a number and then we create the point like this because we, have, we know the interval and then we simply multiply the number of the, the distance, right? But in this fashion, we know the first and last number. And then we have the number, how many points we want to populate between two points, okay? This is a, the logic, the very simple math, yeah. So here, Something is coming. So because we're starting from minus a here and plus a, right? And then we want to populate the 10 points. Maybe what if I want to populate 50 points? Yeah, it become line. It makes sense, right? Maybe let's say um, 12. Great, because we make a pipeline. So we can actually reuse the code, you know. And then the, the last example in this case, so we have um, some offset value and then using the double for loop. Oh, okay. Um, do you know why I couldn't see any in a point here? Does anyone know the uh, angle back? Okay. Does anyone know the, the, the reason? <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, this is simply because we use the same color. So I'm going to use blue here. Yeah, come on, okay. So what I, what I do is uh, based on the, um, um, the i and j index, I apply the radius here. Yeah, it's nothing special, yeah. So I highly recommend you guys like revisit this material and then just type in. Even if you couldn't understand, it doesn't matter. Just type in, just keep typing, yeah. This is actually the best way to learn programming anyhow. So um, this is the line example. I'm not going to describe these duplicated things. So this is the how we did draw the, uh, let's say the point here. And then I'm just going to comment out. What is this? Okay, so we have a basically coordinate system like a point one, second point and third point, right? This is the, the AP, how the API works. Previously, we use the arc function, right? But now, we need to use the move to function in order to designate for starting point. And then the following point uh, need to be um, executed by line to function here, yeah. So that we are able to draw this line, correct. And then also there's a parameter we can define the line width and line style, which is the stroke color. 
for example. And then I use the stroke in order to actually draw on the screen. Okay. Um, let me uncomment the second example. So now what I did is, uh, okay, I'm gonna give you a minimum, minimum um, the number and maximum number and the number of points. The between minimum and maximum, give me random X and random Y. Yeah? And then basically this pipeline is, I mean, this pipeline, I, I mean, this, these are declared the parameter. And then this uh, scope of command, uh, the script is basically produce the data based on the parameters. And then this scope is basically draw the data on the screen. Correct. So if I do, let's say, my 100, you can make some crazy things. 100, and then let's say 100. Minimum minus one, uh, minus 100, and maximum uh, 100. So we have like a scale-like area. So within this scale-like area, we, we ask like a random X and Y, and then we can concatenate as a vector. In this case, vector has a two value, X and Y. There's no Z here. And then we can just, just uh, um, draw the line in order in the list, yeah. So let me jump the other example quickly. So here, this is actually nothing special compared to the, um, yeah. Okay, so one thing I can mention is that, let me actually jump to the previous example really quickly. So, I think this is good. So, we draw a line, right? This is a line, polyline maybe. However, uh, one thing I uh, forget, not forget actually, but as I said, once we open something, we need to close here, right? So let me close this one, just for fun. What happen? Yeah, they become polygon, like an area. So if, if I do like CTX, like fill, execute, and then we actually apply some infill color. There's no infill color for now, so white as a white become the default color for the infill of this polygon. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is a line is basically in the same entity as a polygon, which is area. Okay. So um, for the, the other example here, this is the nothing special. Uh, okay. This is nothing special in terms of the structure, just so we can create a canvas here. And then one function draw point, I just encapsulate the function. Because, you know, as I said, um, this is a really good habit to, you know, uh, isolate some algorithm as a function, yeah. Because the beauty of the computer science, the beauty of the computation design or creative coding is more about a reuse the existing things or reuse uh, the previous algorithm or like a, like a assemble or disassemble different sort of different executions, okay. So I basically encapsulate the point draw function and then the line functions, right. And then I'm uncommented this is a little bit like a HTML, uh, like a front end related to the technique. But basically what I did is uh, append a event on the, on, on the canvas. So for example, like if I click it, if I click it, they keep populating. If I click it, they actually execute that one. Yeah. So we basically clean the canvas and then we print X and Y here. X and Y, mouse X and Y. This is about the uh, screen position, yeah. But we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna draw some the geographical data on the map. In this case, we're gonna have the latitude and longitude. So latitude and longitude need to be project to that designate screen position. Yeah, this is actually all about the mapping, particularly on, uh, let's say, geographic, geographical visualization things. But now we are just focusing on the screen position now, okay? So when, whenever, whenever you click it, we draw, we draw line first and then point. Do you know why I draw the uh, line, line first? Because there's a layer. 
So if I draw like um, point first and then line, then you can see this result. Yeah, it depends on you. How how how, how do you want to visualize it? But the renderer has their own order. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it. So and then we can uncomment with the second example. Okay, I'm gonna click, click, click. Yeah, so in this case, we basically, whenever we fire the event, yeah, this function is uh, ask the length of the array that we append some data. So the maximum, the length is a uh, five here. Yeah, because we are starting from zero, right? So that's why we have six here. So if I add one more point, and then the, the, the first one is because I'm gonna be evaporate because I use a shift, just like a pop that we learn in the Python. We basically uh, get rid of the first item and then move all the item the ahead of uh, one more like uh, the, 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 the index towards the zero. And then we have a one more space at the end of the length and then add the information that we just click on the screen, yeah? So this is the logic behind the scene. This is self-explanatory, very, very clear. All code is online, so you guys can just play with and mesh with, break it, most importantly, and then fix it. This is actually really, you know, good education things. So here, right now, as I said, there's two things. One is like a, let's say, static canvas or static rendering things. But the thing I did is like a dynamic thing. It's keep looping, actually. So what I did is the uh, um, so same as before, you know, we declare the canvas and then append the canvas in the div. And then we, uh, here, basically, I, I declared some variable, a variable or some parameter that generate particular point data, right? And then this is the rendering loop. Actually, this is the fashion how we create the, uh, the infinite new loop, yeah? So don't, don't worry about this, this line, this three, three line of the code. So what you need to do is this area, because this area is going to be executed at least more than 60 or 90 times per second. Yeah, this is all about the real time graphics. So the reason I, uh, you know, um, compute, the data and prepare the data before actual rendering is because I don't need to, you know, create the data on the fly because on the fly, we are just interested in visualizing because we just compute the data in the first place just for one time and then we receive the result, right? And then on the real time render, we just simply visualize nothing special. Yeah. However, in this, in this case, I play with a little bit of about like the radius of the circles. So I have a timer and then even I pre-calculate the, uh, the radius, the point here, because I don't want like a, you know, increase the computation expense during the rendering time, right? It makes a lot of sense, right? But I simply index and then multiply the, the sign because the sign is sometimes like a plus and minus. If you assign the minus value for the radius and then the program is gonna break. So we always need to make the plus number. So that's why I, um, uh, like a, this, this one is a guarantee. In any number, we're gonna uh, add plus one. So even if you get like a minus one, we are okay because we, we are able to convert this number as a like above the plus. So maybe for a little more fun, I can increase the, the radius a little bit. Yeah, the, the speed, yeah, this is speed and they're going crazy. Maybe if I do, okay, so basically math random give us normalized value, like a probability between zero and one. So I multiply five, meaning that I'm, I'm going to get the oh, zero to five, yeah? In this case, maybe I can do this like that. This is a little bit fun, yeah? Uh, Oh, no, this is not a sign, yeah? I mean, okay. I can do like a 15, yeah. 
There are really crazy things. Just think about it. We have a two different data layer. And then if they, they are later matching for some reason, and then we can emphasize, we can make a, some pulse or like oscillate animation to you know, create that, some visual effect that detected by human eyes, right? So I mean, there's a lot of things opening, you know, opportunity, chance to play with the, the, the um, visualizing. So it's all about freedom, you know, all about your design process, all about like how you are uh, looking at the data. Yeah. So, I guess um, the sort of the workshop is done. However, always um, you know I'm prepared something for you know you guys. So there's some several demos. So this is uh, some of my um, the example exercise for my students. Um, come on, what's wrong? Okay, let me close the unnecessary windows. Yeah, so to think about it, as I said, it's all about the coordinate system, actually, to be honest, if you are really into the geometry. So what it does is just declares two areas, right? So we have uh, the resolution, how we gonna decompose this area like that. And we also have uh, the modular operation, as I said, yeah? And also we have the, some, um, ask some connectivity based on the distance, yeah? So it looks complicated, but nothing special. I mean, I already uh, give you guys all the function and the mathematics and then some structure. So out of this, you guys can make like this kind of, uh, um, um, you know, the geometry things for fun. Just also to think about what if we, what if we have a data and then what if, what if we have this kind of technology? What, com what combination can be happen? You know, what's gonna be result? Why we need to reveal in this kind of result? We, this is kind of questions really, you know, uh, good. I mean, the very interesting topics for your individual profession, like I'm an architecture designer, or, you know, the map, uh, the geographical designer, or landscape designers. There's a lot of tool and, you know, interesting um, revealing result. So this is nothing special. Just like to think about like one of the example in the graph of things. So we have a point. And then we have uh, like some attractor. I'm using the my mouse cursor as attractor. Yeah. So, and we have the other attractor here. Oh, this is an example, I guess. Uh, yeah, this is a circle grid. Oh, they are same. <laughs> Sorry. And this is circle grid. Yeah. So I I use the wheel mouse wheel so we can maximize minimize. The, the, the strengths. I can click it, click it, click it, click, maybe zoom in, zoom out. You can do this kind of operation using Canvas. And we have a circle and line. So this is just, uh, I just do, I, I have on my YouTube channel, I sometimes I do just live code, just when I got bored and then at the time I just create it. Whenever you click it, it creates a circle between the line However, if you click it, they actually found the closest point and then draw the circle and then create the straight line between the circle. So, yeah, I mean, it's all possibilities there. You can try, you can make some fun, nothing special, and then ball bounce here. So to think about it, we have a, like a, just, just a trivial example for the creative coding or, or like, a, uh, visualization things. So we have uh, like a uh, circle and then once circle reach the particular number, in this case we send height over top or bottom, and then we basically um, um, detour the vector, the velocity or direction so that we can do this. So otherwise we can also, you know, um, reuse other sort of data rather than the, you know, their own like, velocity or speed or position. Yeah, we can simply like, uh, yeah, replace data things. And then this is the line example. Yeah, we already saw it, right? And then the last one is that the split, uh, this is one of the, actually one of the, my research things in, the, in my company, but this is also starting from my personal other the people joining the company. Anyhow, so to think about it, we have, uh, oops, 
what? <laughs> yeah, we had uh, this kind of uh, uh, data, right? But the data sometimes is like really hard to like, revealing things, so you need a lot of pre-processing. So I mean, this kind of uh, the lens or filter things that like, give us like uh, some color strengths as a, a, by representing the number of dots inside of the each pixel or each block, right? So I think um, so also we can customize this kind of uh, uh, tool, you know, using the Canvas API. Yes, these are demo, and there's also the TypeScript starter. If you click it, it drives you to my uh, GitHub. I mean, um, there's a lot of uh, nice and well-defined the, the, the TypeScript starter with the sort of canvas things. So you can just search in the GitHub. There's a lot of examples, and then you can make some poke from this page, and then you can build your own application. Um, this is also canvas, canvas starter. So this is nothing special. Just give us like a simple canvas, and then whenever you move your mouse, and then you can actually draw because we append a move mouse, mouse and move event on the canvas. So just think about, we have data, and then whenever I move my mouse, we call it the data, and then give us some feedback. I mean, we can create this kind of pipeline on top of it, anyhow. Um, yeah, so I think I'm done. Um, do you guys have any questions? Hello. Are you okay? <laughs> Any feedback, please? Oh, 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 sorry, okay. Okay. Ask on mute. Ask, uh, no, no, ask, ask on me too. Yeah. yeah, so you guys can say something. Please, I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I have several friends who learn the work in different workshops, you know, but they have like really nice picture of you guys and make some fun and communicating. But I know this is a little bit boring topic. I'm a little bit exhausted for the designers because all about like a syntax and API, which I never experienced. But you know, you know, as time goes by, technology is getting involved, and the young people, you know, try to compete with you guys. So we need to keep up with the technology, and you know, take advantage of this, you know, kind of things. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want, once I done the uh, record and then I process it, I'm just literally. Just unload the YouTube without editing because editing kills me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you so much. And tomorrow we have a um, workshop about the creating our own custom geometry class, which is a little bit more in depth. It's going to be, I mean, yeah. But just bear with me. And then the video is there, so I just wanted to freeze the the, the, the lecture series so that. Once you get familiar with the Python and TypeScript in order, and then you can, um, you know, at the end of the day, you guys want to create your own sort of geometry and um, um, for the visualization or agent-based design system or parametric uh, design system. So I think um, tomorrow we will learn how to create this class for the architecture of the software things. So thank you so much and see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.